Hello and welcome to a new video about the electric field. We're talking about capacitors now. Last time we had a look what is happening if we put capacitors in a series connection, so one after the other in a row. Today we want to have a look what is happening uh, that when we put a capacitor in parallel connection, uh, so next to each other, always connecting the same two points, the same two junction to each other. And we want to replace this, this uh, I've already drawn here, the situation, what we want to look. So uh, we are looking at three, three um, capacitors and we will again extrapolate, so uh, extend our thoughts to more than three to n capacitors and we want to, want to replace this with one replacement, imaginary replacement capacitor, which cannot be distinguished from outside, so from outside this capacitor. So this situation has to go to this situation. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's have a look. Yeah. Here we have one current and this one current is dividing each other is dividing each other, it's dividing, it's divided into different currents. Yeah? And we had a rule dealing with this quite some time ago from a certain Mr. Gustav Kirchhoff. And this Gustav Kirchhoff said, this is the junction rule, whatever is going inside a junction, a node, yeah, must come out somewhere. Yeah? So if we have here this junction one. Yeah. Let's let's see what this means. What is going inside is I. Then that's it. There's no nothing going more inside. And this equals I1 plus I2 plus I3. And now the explanation. If there would be more than three, then we would have plus plus I n. Extrapolation again. That's the rule, right? And now I will simply multiply this with a constant factor. Hmm? Left side and right side, I will multiply with a constant factor. I'm calling this factor t. So I will multiply with t. I'm allowed to do that. Huh? Now I'm writing. Now now I'm testing gravitation, <laughs> and now I'm writing with the correct uh, uh, colors of this. So we have the I multiplied by T equals I1 multiplied by T, and I2 multiplied by T, and I3 multiplied by T, and somewhere I N multiplied by T, always multiplied by T. And of course, it's still the sum. So here again, extrapolation. T and plus signs are really looking similar. Now what is I multiplied by T? Yeah? I multiplied by T is the transported charge. So this is actually the charge which is in here. So we have here Q, right? So I multiplied by T is the charge which has been added to this capacitor in the time t. If I say now t is time. And i1 multiplied by t, by the same amount of time, it's q1, it's q2, it's q3, it's qn. All right? So actually what is written here is that we have here a q, q equals q1 plus Q2, plus Q3, plus Qn. Extrapolation again. So the complete charge is the sum of all... It's, it's logical. Huh? If we are transporting a, a, an amount of charge, then this charge is divided into subcharges, and those subcharges in total, in sum, must be the total transported charge. I mean, this it, it, it should not be a much of a surprise. And of course, 
Of course, we do have still the situation or the relationship Q equals capacity multiplied by voltage. And now this is true C1 multiplied by U1, C2 multiplied by U2, C3 multiplied by U3 and C multiplied by U. Now let's think about what this is. U is a potential difference and we already had this when we made a parallel uh, circuit for resistors. Q, uh, U is a potential difference. Here this whole thing here has one potential and this whole thing here is the second potential. And here this is the same potential than this one and this is the same potential than this one. Because in between we have the sa same difference in potential. Huh? This means if the difference between here and here is that big, u0, then the difference between here and here is also u0. The difference between here and here is also u0. Here and here, here and here, here and here, here and here. Everything is u0. So this means u equals u1 equals u2 equals u3 equals whatever equals un equals u0. Huh? This is again the extrapolation here, not drawn. So everything is, is u0. Yeah? And now I put this in. Yeah? Instead of q, I'm writing c multiplied by u0 equals c1 multiplied by u0. C2, C3, extrapolation, Cn. And always I have this multiplied by U0 inside. Here we again have the extrapolation. And now I can divide by U0. And what is happening is that is written C equals C1 plus C2, plus C3, plus whatever, plus Cn. So this is now our replacement capacitor. All right. This is our replacement capacitor. Our replacement capacitor is the sum of all the capacitance of our replacement capacitor is the sum of all separated capacitances. <laughs> so it, now the capacitance is getting more. It's working exactly vice versa to, to um, resistance. Resistance would here be less. Is there also a possibility? Last way, I sh last time I, sh I, I showed you with the two distances of the two capacitors in series. Now, let's say we have two capacitors parallel. Here is one capacitor and here is a second capacitor. And I draw them. It's not happening by accident that those two have different sizes. Because here, I say this is C1. This is C2. Okay? They both have the same D. Yeah? So we have here D. And we have here D. It's the same. Same distance. Yeah? What is differing is we have here an area 1 and we have here an area 2. Okay? Now let's write down what C is, C1 is with our formula. C1, Epsilon, A1, divided by D. C2 equals Epsilon, A2, divided by D. And now I will set this in here. So I say C, our replacement, is C1 plus C2. So actually that's Epsilon A1 divided by D plus Epsilon A2 divided by D. This is Epsilon D, 
a1 plus a2, this is epsilon a divided by d with a equals a1 plus a2. So the parallel connection of two resist, uh, resistance capacitors <laughs> is acting like we would extend the area of two plate capacitors. Okay, so we have simply a bigger area. We can think about it if we're not drawing it like that, but if we're drawing it like that, that we say, okay, here's C1, and immediately touching is C2, because it does not really matter if those blades are already touching or if we connect them outside. Here we are touching already. Yeah, so here we have still a C1 and we have still a C2. And now I can get rid of, of this connection because we are already connected here. So here we have a total C. Yeah. And here the area, this is still D. And the area A equals a1 plus A2. This is how I can imagine this, uh, that the capacitance is getting more. And we said, okay, the more a capacitance, a capaci the more area a capacitor has, the more capacitance it can offer. This is how you can remember what is parallel, what is what is serial connection and capacitor wave. Yeah, now we have replacement capacitors for series and parallel connections. Uh, well, next time we are making a little bit... We're talking about the math behind. We're thinking about what is... How can I describe the behavior of a capacitor in a mathematical way? We will get to differential equations. I will explain them. Yeah, I will explain them uh, next time at a capacitor in a DC circuit, direct, cir direct current circuit. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.